Hi, my name is Blair Robert. Today, we are looking at the topic, conservation of natural resources. Conservation of natural resources. Objectives of lesson. As the lesson progresses, the learners should be able to, one, define conservation of natural resources. Two, state at least four reasons for conservation of natural resources. Three, mention at least five natural resources in the environment. Four, state at least four benefits of each natural resources. Five, list ways of ensuring conservation of natural resources. And finally, number six, mention difficulties limiting the conservation of natural resources. What is conservation of natural resources? Conservation simply means the protection, preservation, and wise use of natural resources in the environment in order to prevent their wastage, ensure their continuous availability, and that their original qualities are maintained just for the use or benefit of mankind. Conservation also involves the planning, controlling, and wide use of natural resources so that they are not exploited or wasted in the environment. So the benefit or the main reason for conservation is actually for the use of mankind, the benefit of mankind. So let's talk about reasons for conservation of natural resources. Number one is to prevent the destruction of the natural ecosystem so that all the living things and the non-living things in the environment are not destroyed. Number two is to ensure the continuous availability and use of these natural resources all for the benefit of mankind, especially like in the case of plants which are used for medicinal purposes. Number three here is to provide basis for research purpose. Researchers and scientists are working day in just to find answers to scientific problems. And most of the time they make use of these natural resources for their research. Number four, for the protection and preservation of rare and valuable organisms in the environment. There are valuable or very important plants and animals in the environment because of their importance to man. And so they need to be protected. Some of them are even few. They can be said to be rare in the environment, so they need to be preserved as well. And lastly, but not the least, reason for conservation of natural resources to promote recycling of some of these resources. Some of these resources can be um, conserved by recycling them so that they can be available to use and reuse and reuse time without number. So I want to talk about the meaning of natural resources. Now, what are natural resources? Natural resources are materials that occur naturally in our environment. And so they are needed for the use and sustenance of mankind. There are two types of natural resources, namely one, renewable natural resources, two, non-renewable natural resources. So we'll be discussing them one after the other. We'll start by looking at the meaning of, yes, renewable natural resources. Now, renewable resources are those natural resources that can be restored replaced or reused in the environment. They can be recovered when used, though they are inexhaustible. The meaning is that when they are used, you can get them back. They can never finish in the environment. Examples are water, soil, food, animals, plants, and air. Let us list them once again. Water, soil, food, animals, air, and plants. Take note that another name based on this topic for animals is wildlife and another name for plants is forest. So let's look at the second type, non-renewable resources. These are the natural resources that cannot be restored, cannot be replaced or reused in the environment. They cannot be recovered when they are used. So they can be exhausted. So they are exhaustible. The meaning is that they can get finished. When you use them, they are gone and gone forever. Examples are mainly mineral resources such as iron, coke, tin, copper, gold, petroleum, and even petroleum products such as kerosene, diesel, natural gas, and so on. Can we list them once again? Yes, I think it's important. Iron, tin, coke, gold, copper, crude oil, petroleum, and their products. Remember their products. Good. So let's move on. We want to look at the methods of conserving natural resources. Number one method that can be used for conserving air, water, 
and soil is to avoid or prevent their pollution. So one method of conserving air, soil and water is to prevent their pollution. So water pollution, soil pollution, air pollution can be conserved by avoiding their pollution. Number two, avoid bush burning. When you burn bushes, you tend to burn the plants there. And even the animals there can die. Why some of them will even run out of such a place? And so some rare ones or very valuable ones are destroyed in the process. So it's very important that we avoid bush burning to conserve resources. Number three, legislation or law against indiscriminate, indiscriminate use of resources and illegal mining of minerals should be enacted. Yes, indiscriminate use of resources, one way to check it is by making law that can sanction or check people from using resources anyhow. And illegal mining, very bad. Laws can also help to check miners so that they don't do the mining illegally. Number four method of conserving natural resources is afforestation and reforestation method. These two processes should be encouraged while deforestation should be avoided or discouraged. Afforestation here means planting of trees of value. For example, there is a bare land and they decide to plant trees on such land. That is afforestation. While reforestation, there are plants there, the plants are cut down and then they are replaced by planting of new ones. That is reforestation. Why deforestation simply means cutting down of trees of value and so should be discouraged. Another point that can be used in um, conserving resources by this, number five, poaching should be avoided to prevent the extinction of endangering animals of value. Okay? Now, poaching means illegal killing of animals for gains. Some people just derive joy in killing animals. All right? Some of them poach them for the material they can get from their bodies, maybe their horn, their skin, their height, and so on. So here is an image showing the poaching of a of an organism. I think that should be an elephant. Number six, overgrazing by animals, which may cause soil erosion, should be prevented. Overgrazing is when we have many cattle or herbivores feeding on the few available grasses on a piece of land. And so they can likely finish all the grasses and the land becomes bare. This can lead to soil and even wind erosion. So this should be avoided. Overgrazing should be avoided. Number seven, over dependent on a particular mineral resources should be discouraged, especially for countries that depend on a particular resources. Some countries depend on crude oil as their main source of revenue. If they can look for other alternatives, I think it will help in making sure the economy of such a country is not destroyed. So over dependent on a particular mineral resource should be discouraged. And number eight, game and forest reserve should be established. Game reserve where animals are kept like zoo, forest reserve, so that people can go there for sightseeing, touring, you can go there for research and so on. So let's talk about the effects of poaching. Remember that poaching is illegal killing of animals for game. It can lead to two, two things. Number one, it can lead to extinction but you can lead to endangering of organisms. So extinct species, they can simply mean elimination of species of organisms. So when we have organisms and these organisms are being push, uh, pushed, sorry, being pushed over time, they can gradually get eliminated from the environment, meaning they will not exist anymore. Okay, this can also occur during or as a result of competition. So competition too can lead to um, extinction of organisms. A common example of organ that is extinct now is the dinosaur. They used to exist before, but we are told that they don't exist anymore because they have been extinct from the environment. Another one is that endangered species can also be an effect of poaching. Now, poaching, these are species of organisms that are in danger of extinction. They are still in existence, but they are rare. They are very few. Okay, and if humans continue to poach on these few available organisms, they can get or go into extinction. They are rare, and so most times they, they can also be rare due to natural disaster, epidemics, or even human activities, whereby they kill these animals for their skin, their hinds, their horns, tusks, and so on. A common example of rare 
or endangered species are leopard, elephant, cheetah, and so on. So, want to look at the importance of natural resources. Remember, we said we have the renewable and the non-renewable resources. They are very important to us. So, we'll start by looking at water. Water is a source of food. Call them seafood. Food such as crayfish, fish, lobsters, prawns, and so on are gotten from water bodies. So, water is very, very important because it's a source of employment and income for fishermen and the government. It's also used to generate electricity, and that is called hydroelectrical power. And lastly, but not the least, it serves as a means of transportation. It's used in the agricultural industry that is in farming. It's also used in domestic um, area for cooking, bathing, washing, and the rest. And of course, in the industry, most times it is used as coolant. Now, the air as a resource is important. It provides oxygen for animals and carbon dioxide to plants. Number two, it serves a source of wind energy, which can be used to power milk. Number three here is that it is the habitat of some microorganisms. So microorganisms live in the air. Okay, and lastly, it makes life comfortable and meaningful. Imagine life without air. Of course, no animal will exist. Okay, number three, the soil. Now, soil support farming. That means you plant crops on soil. Now, it is the habitat of some organisms like earthworm, termites, and the rest. Now, the soil is um, a place where buildings are erected. Okay? From the next, before, the source of mineral resources such as crude oil, tin, gold, and so on. It also supports forests and its resources. So, the plants, the trees, are found on land. And so, on the land, we have soil. So, let's look at the importance of forests. Don't forget that forest means plants. So plants are source of food. You can get food such as fruit, vegetables, and so on. Of course, meat is not bad. All right. The second talk of indirectly, whereby we get meat of animals that feed on the plant. But don't take that as an example because meat is not a plant. Number two, important is that it's a source of employment and income to farmers and government respectively. And of course, number three, Timbers used for making furniture, chairs, tables, and the rest are from forest. They are even used in building. In building. Number four, it provides medicinal herbs. Okay? It also serves as fuel. Okay? Can, firewood can be used for cooking. This firewood are from the forest. And the next is that it serves as windbreaker. It prevents winds from destroying things. So what you look at these resources, wildlife, animals are known as wildlife, right? Now animals are a source of food, that is very, very correct, okay? You can get eggs, fish, milk, meat, and so on from animals. So it's a source of protein to organisms. Another important is that it's a source of employment for hunters and income or revenue for the government. Wildlife provides research work for scientists or researchers. It also serves as a source of recreational and tourist sense. The last one I want to talk about is mineral resources. Petroleum products, okay, can be used as a source of fuel. So we have petrol, we have um, kerosene, natural gas, this, all these are petroleum products which are used in propelling our cars, generators, machines, and so on, okay? Next one is gold is used in making jewelry such as neck plates, earrings, bangles, and the rest. They are also source of employment and income to the government. They are used in construction companies. You can see resources such as iron, steel, tin, aluminium used in construction industry. So let's talk about the ways of ensuring conservation of resources. Okay, number one is for the government sets set standards for pollution control. Okay, there should be amount of resources that should be released into the environment which is safe. And if it's above that, that means it's unsafe. So if a standard is set for pollution control to help or go along in conserving resources, number two is a netting of conservation law or decree. This will go along with to check indiscriminate use of resources and of course illegal 
mining of mineral resources. Number three is establishment of game and forest research, like the Uluma Forest Reserve in Kwarasti, Yankari Game Reserve in Baoshi, Shasha River Forest in Oguste, all in Nigeria. These are special places where rare or valuable animals can be kept for research or future use. The public awareness of conservation education. People need to know of conservation, the reasons for conservation, and how it benefits them. So public awareness for education is very important. And lastly, establishment of conservation agencies. There are agencies that should be controlling or monitoring the way resources are being used okay, in order to ensure that they are not misused, wasted, exploited, or mismanaged. Okay, we have different agencies such as Department of Wildlife, Nigeria Conservation Foundation, Ministry of Education, and all countries, they all have their own agencies for these purposes. So let's talk about difficulties limiting the conservation of resources. Number one here is oil spillage. So oil can spill into water and it can spill on land. This can go a long way affecting or making conservation of resources very difficult. Number two, adoption of poor farming methods. So the farming method used can um, actually be a problem limiting the conservation of resources. Number three, indiscriminate bush burning. Despite the awareness, people still tend to burn bushes, which is very, very wrong. Okay? Then this is actually a factor that is limiting the conservation of resources. Number four, deforestation and desertification. We've explained deforestation. Desertification means you have a land full of plants and these plants are being cut down gradually the place is turning into a desert. Number five, is poaching, illegal killing of animals. We've discussed that. Number six, pollution. By now you should know what pollution is and how it can become a problem that can limit the conservation of resources. And lastly, occurrence of natural disaster. Those ones, no one can control them. They are just natural disaster. But if there are ways we can control, why not? But this and many more are the difficulties limiting the conservation of natural resources. Ooh, with students' activity time. So it's time for you to actually test your mastering of this topic. It's quite lengthy, but I believe you understood it all. So get your bio and your pen and start working. In case you were confused about any of this or you could not answer any of the questions, don't worry. Go back to the video, listen to it again, watch it as many times as necessary for you. And at the end, I believe you'll be able to answer all of these questions and all other questions of conservation of natural resources. Okay, let me tell you, in case you have not subscribed, please do subscribe, watch my video, click the notification bell, like my video, and lastly, drop your comments. I'll really be glad to give an answer to your questions. So it's time to mark. So our desire is to have 100%. So mark yourself and see if you can get your 100%. All right, this time I say thank you for joining me in this class. Thank you for learning. Have a wonderful